today I'm here with the Greater Boston Group and we have the new Spartan Soldier Jetter here. This Jetter is a great starter Jetter uh, with 3,000 PSI, 12 gallons a minute. It does a real good job with residential service lines. A lot of plumbing companies or drain uh, cabling companies make the mistake of thinking that they're cleaning a drain when they cable it. And what they're actually doing is clearing a blockage. The Jetters give us another tool that will help us remove the tree roots, the grease, and, and really truly clean the drain. We're gonna go through a quick walkthrough. So when you have a unit, I would advise you to, to show the new people and get the, the team and the young person that's joining the trade a quick background on this. Always recommend getting your local Spartan Tool uh, sales manager in to do formal training, um, especially before going into the winter season months and then coming out of it. So that way all the components um, and training can be, be looked at. First thing whenever we pull a trailer is to make sure that the lights are working. We got the, the emergency brake cable connected, the ball, make sure that we have the proper size hitch and ball to go along with the piece that we're, we're towing, right? And test it out before leaving. This is the number one step to do up there and then make sure all these components. Couple important things to note. This is what we call a leader hose. This is important because when we are putting the jetter down there, being that it's all one color, we wanna know how far or how close we are to coming out of the hole or the clean out. If we get too close and that head's running, we can create quite a bit of damage and, and possibly personal injury. Always make sure to use the proper PPE when doing this, uh, personal protective equipment. Here's the problem with this though. When you put these couplings together, you create a rigid coupling or length of pipe. This is a problem. When you're going down three inch or smaller and sometimes even four inch 90s, because this is not gonna bend and flex. It'll go down the sweep, it's not gonna come back up, okay? So, when do we use this? We're gonna use this for full-size cleanouts on the exterior homes. We're gonna use this if we are doing any mainline work. Uh, for the most part, we're probably not gonna use it very often if we're inside a residential property, okay? What you can see that we've done here is we've marked the, we have marked the hose with a piece of tape at 10 feet. So that way, this is a good rule of thumb to match that, even though it's the same color, okay? And then as you get going, we'll mark it every so often, okay? It's highly recommended. You can see how they put this back. This is perfect. We want the reel to always look like this because this hose is not uh, a cheap piece of, of equipment. And if not done right, we can, we can really damage it, okay? Uh, when transporting it, it is highly recommended that no water be left inside the tank when pulling, okay? Another thing to note, for a young person, they must be of the age of 21 in order to pull the jetter and the, the truck together. Anything over 10,000 pounds requires uh, a DOT and an uh, under 21 year old is not allowed by law to drive a DOT um, equipment. So we have a leader hose, we have an air switch. Air switch is a manual way to turn the unit on and off. As simple as plug it again into this port here and now you can run the equipment using the air switch. The other alternative, which will be more common, will be the, the remote control, okay? Remote control and the key should always be together. We wanna to make sure we don't lose this and this is a very expensive piece of equipment. So one of the most important things to make sure that we don't leave on job sites and we have it all times. We have the different types of nozzles. Inside of the Router One training manual, we'll explain what each nozzle does and what's recommended for which type of project we're doing. Very important to always have a camera when jetting, so that way we know what we're getting ourselves into and what we're trying to accomplish by using the jetter, right? Each unit's gonna come with a wand. This can be used to, to wash off the vehicles at low pressures, and it could also be used as an on-off switch with the smaller jet hose or the smaller sink drain lines, okay? We have the Tiger Whip. When we are going down manholes, we must use this so that way the hose is not riding on that 90 degree sharp piece of 
clay or concrete pipe. We don't want to wear this thin. Uh, highly recommended. When we roll this out after about 20 uses or when you're on a, a job site where you have it all out, flip the hose. So that way we're wearing each side of the hose at the same time. It's very hot out today. We have other areas for nozzles. This is a 3 ace hose. Again, 3,000 PSA at 12 gallons of water per minute. Real important to know that, so that way if we are jetting a sewer that is backed up, we'll know how much water we're gonna be putting in and how long we have. This toolbox is gonna to have a lot of the other components. Every jetter should have a crescent wrench and a pair of channel locks, just so that we, we can make sure the heads are snug and any service work is needed. Okay. We're gonna go through, just make sure you have a quick checklist. And again, use the checklist and Spartan tool representative to make sure you have everything you need. We have our jetter head box. We have our manual hose attachment to fill up the water. This is gonna be used especially in winter months when we have this antifreeze. We're gonna to wanna to do it manually so that way we can drain it out and leave this antifreeze so this won't freeze during the winter. Okay. We have our hose, throttle, fill valve, shut off, antifreeze, water tank. Again, manuals will show everything. Highly recommend reading the manuals and continuing education on this. Two times a year before the fall and after the spring. Um, real good rule of thumb, keep everybody up to speed. Can't have too much training. Uh, pressure gauge here. We have our on and off for our water feed from our tank to our hose. We have our rotating where this will actually pull out and adjust. So when we do this, there are two points of access for that. We have, excuse me. We have a strap back here that we would lock. And then we have our clutch right here. This is to be used when we pull up to in front of the home, we can wheel it out so that way we're not rubbing the hose on the sides of this, okay? It's real important that we try not to kink the hose or get it to rub, okay? Make sure that it's locked into position before transporting. Always go through and double check. Don't just assume one of our partners did this. Everyone should go through and check it on their own especially the person driving it. It's their responsibility to make sure that this is set up according to be transported, okay? Latch it, real simple, but yet must be done. We also have a guide to help. This is not an easy task. Getting this hose back to where it is takes time and patience, okay? Try not to rush, two people, big. When we are putting this back, Make sure that we're not dragging the heads along the ground. Take the heads off, so that way we're not wearing and tearing on those, those heads. The heads are very expensive. They're great tools for us to have. Let's make sure we take good care of them. Always connect the hose back up to the pressure. Good rule of thumb, in the winter, water won't freeze if it's moving. So we could always run it. I would highly recommend not even using the piece of equipment under 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, just push it off, just, just wait, and bad things happen when you try to push it too hard, okay? Uh, in transporting, put everything neatly back in its place. Check to make sure you have everything. We have a general checklist, make sure we've completed it and go through it to make sure that we're not leaving anything behind. Nothing more frustrating than getting to a job and you can't find what you need and you have to backtrack to figure out what job you left it on. Okay. When you put it away, simply lock it, latch it, and always lock it when you're leaving the, the equipment by itself. We don't want any of that stuff to get stolen. It's all expensive equipment and material. Up here, we have an emergency stop. We have a reel, the speed of how fast it rolls in and out. Highly recommend keeping it on low speed. Try not to go fast, bad things happen when you go too quick. We have our manual pulsator. That's gonna jump the jet and give that jet head a little bit. So if we have to negotiate a turn or have to get it to a point where we have to jump something, this is a good option to use. 
We have our remote switch. These are all simple toggles on and off, and then the manual water valve, okay? Uh, hose rewind manual. You could also use it in neutral and just pull it out. Good rule of thumb, pull out what you need, carry it downstairs or into the home, and then jet rather than dragging the hose through the house. That way you know how much you should have and you're not taking out more than you need, okay? Air switch, as we discussed, low water, the unit will just turn off. When you run out of water, it'll just turn off. It's not gonna damage the piece of equipment, but that's, if it just shuts down, you know that's what the problem is, okay? And then you have the fuel gauge and the, the water level, I'm sorry. Uh, keys, keep the keys with the remote control, less chance you'll have of losing them, okay? Uh, again, when we're done jetting, we're gonna check, make sure everything's hooked up, walk through the list. That is the number one thing to do, okay? As far as jetting goes, this is a simple piece of equipment as long as you go through the training and work with each other as a team. Always have two people when doing this to make sure that we can properly set it up and that we take the proper precautions as far as transporting and getting everything back to the way it was. Thank you.